yeah i think we are live so good yeah. evening everyone so this is uh, the uh, class only on uh, bladder dissection on request of many many gynecologists uh, who have uh, uh, requested for a different like a different class only for bladder dissection so uh, this will be only for simple case where the uterus is up to 10 weeks and there is no previous section so this is only for that because we want to keep it for 10 minutes so that they can finish this class in 10 minutes of their time when they are traveling or when they are uh, when they are like you know short of time so uh, in uh, uh, in bladder dissection i know many of us get stuck whenever we are trying to start doing tlh and we find it difficult to find that right plane where there is no bleeding and where there is that correct space in between the uterus and the bladder so everyone knows the fat belongs to the bladder but where is the fat where is the cervix where is the bladder how much to give the energy source what energy source is ideal for bladder dissection which one has the maximum lateral spread and how much to buzz all these are questions which are constantly like we get uh, queries about in our groups and I, when I first uh, spoke about bladder dissection as a master class uh, Dr. Jay had to tell like well, what is there in that I mean what technique I mean it is just a simple step so it is not as um, uh, as trivial as he thought it is or as he thinks it is because I understand that he finishes it in 10 minutes even yesterday he told the same thing but people who are trying to learn or who have learned and who uh, are normal they find it like you know a little difficult and challenging sometimes even in uh, uh, non-scarred uterus so today we have dr jay to speak about uh, the bladder dissection and please keep the questions uh, mostly basic because we will take another class on ventral fixed uterus and also previously uh, scarred uterus okay so uh, actually i will just very fastly Okay, explain to everyone. You can see the screen, Shilpa Madam. Yeah, here. yeah. It's a whiteboard. You can see that, right? Yes, yes. Okay, fine. So I will very quickly explain to everyone why under you just understand the concept in anatomy. That's it. Don't understand anything else. Okay, when the embryo is growing, no, this is where the cloaca forms. Okay, please remember that from this cloaca. Okay, it is important to understand. I just uh, delete all of this. Why people are drawing God knows. So, from this cloaca, just very quickly. Okay, I'll just do one thing because people are absolutely unable to control their emotions and drawing here. I'll just share the screen. Just hold on. Could you see the screen, Shilpa, madam? No. No. No? No. Uh, now? Is it? Yeah. Now is the screen visible, yes, madam? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, fine. Fine. See, I'm just erasing something. I just wanted to show you that here, na, this cloaca will form two parts. Anterior cloaca, posterior cloaca. Okay. Posterior cloaca will develop into rectum. Anterior cloaca will develop into bladder. This is normal. Now, in the embryology from top, you have two people coming down to form mullier and duct. And that will come in between these two. Okay? This is in female anatomy. Okay. Now, this is the greatest advantage which is offered by the female anatomy. Because it develops like this, Okay, because it develops like this very, very simple anatomical rule. The part which is close to the cloaca will form the urethra. The part above that will go give rise to the vesicle. Okay, and remember, a part above that is going to get obliterated. This is called as uracus. By the side, you will have two arteries, no? We see the bladder by marking the arteries in the fetus, correct, no? Yeah. What are these arteries called? Can anybody Medi tell me? These are called Medium umbilical Medium. arteries. Huh? Umbilical mm. arteries then later form into the obliterated anterior division of internal eyelid. Correct? 
and yeah. behind that what is formed is the bladder now a part of this bladder okay when it is forming it is also contributed from the skin and as a result of which entire bladder is a retroperitoneal organ please remember this do you agree bladder yeah. is a retroperitoneal organ because bladder is a retroperitoneal organ the the part which has come from behind this from the cloaca is basically the vagina and the uterus correct uterus is a intraperitoneal organ that means if you have to ever in your life dissect the bladder down from this spot i will draw the spot see this if in case you have to dissect the bladder down from this spot that means you have to open the peritoneum and the only manner in which you will be able to open the peritoneum okay is by doing this see this simple anatomy yeah? is by making sure that this peritoneum gets pulled up this peritoneum is completely adherent to the bladder almost always and as a result of which the first rule you have to learn is when you want to open the peritoneum to in order to access the bladder you need to pull the bladder don't pull the peritoneum you need to pull the bladder and you need to give traction to the uterus in this upward direction if you are able to do this automatically just look at how the stretched anatomy is i will delete all of this so that i can show you what happens when you stretch if you have to pull the organ correctly the anatomy will be something like this this is where the bladder goes up pulled up you have pulled vagina behind you have pulled the uterus up and as a result of which the peritoneum has become stretched like this and when you cut and when you access you will be able to access this point this is your point of safety and this is the point which can only be achieved with traction over the bladder and traction over the uterus remember only then you will be able to enter in this plane and only when you enter in this plane by the way this is where your lscs is na huh? lower segment cesarean section that is where you are going to cut the uterus that is why this part of the bladder is going to go and get adherent to this part because in your cesarean section you will obviously open the peritoneum push the bladder down when you push the bladder down automatically it is this part only which comes here that is as a result of which majority of the times whenever you injure you are most likely to injure at the fundus of the bladder but this is the concept of embryology there is nothing which you can change about this this is what you need to follow and with that very very quickly we will shift to the video can you see the video shilpa madam yeah i think this video is much more clear isn't it yeah okay so when i quickly go to the video forget all these things i will very quickly go to the bladder once all these things are done yeah can you see that that is yeah. the bladder peritoneum bladder is adherent i am zooming it in that is where the bladder is adherent i am going to be playing it as it is first thing see that uterus pulled up bladder pulled up pulled up mm. not the not the peritoneum bladder pulled up okay i'll show you where the peritoneum is see that that is the peritoneum not pulling the peritoneum not doing that mistake in my life not just pulling the peritoneum go grasp the bladder pull the bladder with an atraumatic instrument the atraumatic instrument which i am using is the alice you have a liberty to use whatever you want to use okay automatically see that peritoneum opened so yeah simple not thing i am doing automatically the peritoneum opened as soon as the peritoneum opened see that so much of the peritoneum has created such a large space that is where the bladder is otherwise adherent in a case of endometriosis see the whole bladder is adherent to the uterus because there is endometriosis along the anterior aspect of the uterus one cut 
and open see that cut open no energy source cut open cut 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 open 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 khatam bladder dissection finished okay the only thing you need to remember is that the bladder otherwise natively is not adherent it is a retroperitoneal organ uterus is an intraperitoneal organ there is no way in which these two organs are going to get stuck to each other only in crisis situations like for example endometriosis previous cesareans the bladder will come and the peritoneum will get adherent first after which the muscle of the bladder will get adherent and see that simple dissection after i cut that region where there is adhesion i don't even have to use electrocoagulation everything goes away everything goes down nothing has happened to the stretch on the bladder the traction is maintained beautifully see that we have completed the bladder dissection in exactly 1 minute okay this is all the time it takes that's it 1 minute dissection done you have reached the vagina bladder dissection over surgery yeah. over Ta -ta. can you just pause okay. it over there can you just pause yeah it's over right yeah yeah, yeah. so anyway in that can you just go back in that so you were left instrument left hand instrument uh, yeah the one which is holding the ub fold the upper uh, part of the ub fold correct uh, yeah to give the traction to the uterus to maintain yeah. the traction and counter traction so yeah. there like the important point to note there is you are not cutting it just at that uh, joint where the uv fold is there you are cutting at least like half a centimeter below it so that there is yeah. a little area where you can grasp it otherwise Correct. there is no grip in that left hand instrument uh, you know i think that is one of the important point because see otherwise what happens is like we are holding on to the round ligament or we are holding on to the fallopian tube to give the traction or we use mm. the myoma screw so in your yeah. technique the important thing and the good traction is because there is uh, that uh, the instrument uh, where there is a slight tissue which you always leave behind because you need to yeah. hold that tissue that is one point second point is you don't think about lateral window technique you don't think about like you know whether to cut here there anywhere like you just go ahead and take a take uh, that one cut in the uv fold so that yeah. you enter that space and then you start like you know dissecting the plane uh, without bothering about like whether the bladder is adherent here there or anywhere so is it more about your uh, feel of the tissue or is it more about your vasculature that you look at i never look at the vasculature almost always because remember one thing vasculature is highly altered when you have endometriosis so i don't have a habit of looking at the vasculature i just go by the feel of the tissue as long as the tissue feels that it is the bladder i avoid if i feel that it is not the bladder i cut yeah yeah so uh, the other thing is like you know how much to use that energy so so we keep saying that okay there is a lot of lateral spread in shearer compared to harmonic and some people switch from shearer or a bipolar to harmonic when they are doing the bladder dissection uh, how much uh, energy source like you know you have to be careful about when we are doing bladder dissection uh if anybody of you is trained in open surgery and in gynec cancer surgery then bladder dissection is done by almost all of us by using monopolar okay so if in case we switch from monopolar to bipolar it is a big achievement for us the torre wa we have switched from monopolar and we have come to bipolar you know so great so it is something which is not at all based on the principle of electro surgery it is mm -hmm. something which is based on traction Yeah, and tissue. You yes. can't say that with harmonic injury and bladder dissection is less. No right. such thing. Okay. Yes. You, yes. you can with the harmonic blade, you can open right through the bladder. Yes. So, I, I agree. I personally don't think. Yes. Don't think so, that should ever be a thought. So do you uh, do you think that like you know there should be smaller chunks of tissue which you uh, hold in the shearer or cut with the tape or the bust should be no. lesser or no. the amount of time that you spend should be something very different from the other tissues that you do absolutely not okay tissue Absolute. is a tissue yeah yeah so till where do you cut it like we know that the you will I know that I do reach till the vagina basically yeah correct so uh, is going till the vagina sufficient or you need to go 1 cm below the vagina so that we have some time we have some whenever, space to suture. whenever you think you have dissected enough no dissect mm -hmm. 0.5 cm more 
Mm-hmm. So, uh, in the, uh, see, we see these fistulas whenever you come to operate, like in our place, like we see a lot of fistulas post hysterectomy that are referred to us. So, invariably, these fistulas, uh, like the vesicovaginal fistulas, which happen, either the suture will be taken through and through the vault into the bladder. Do you think in such cases the bladder dissection is insufficient or they have not gone, uh, like, uh, to bladder dissection is sufficient, vault closure is over extensive okay that is if it is lateral i'm talking about the central see many a times like you know uh, uh, there will be uh, small uh, layers of uh, uh, bladder uh, bladder muscle that they have uh, not dissected enough yeah, and then yeah, they yeah, try to take yeah and then in the center they try to take the stitch so in such cases like uh, i think we can discuss this but uh, a little later when we are talking about the vault closure and all but today confining ourselves to the bladder dissection can you summarize like you know at least five points that everybody should know first thing do not fill methylene blue in the bladder and distend the bladder just to cut it properly that is not required mm -hmm. second hold the bladder to give the traction Hold right. the uterus to give the traction to the uterus or use uterine manipulator. Mm -hmm. Okay. Please make sure that the space is such a avascular space that once you open the space, any which way the bladder will get dissected. You don't really have to do much. Because bladder, as I told you, if you look at embryology, bladder is a retroperitoneal organ. So from intraperitoneal to retroperitoneum, you really don't require anybody's assistance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Third, even if you use scissors, it's absolutely fine. It is absolutely fine to open that space because it is an avascular space. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Maybe fifth, and I think uh, this is probably important. Uh, don't really get worried about, you know, uh, don't, don't get worried about cutting too close to the uterus. Many, many times people want to hug and kiss the uterus and cut close to the uterus. And in that bargain, they cut in that cervical substance. Yeah. And it causes bleeding. bleeding. Don't do that. Just mm -hmm. don't. It's not required. When you cut in the cervical substance, you are cutting in the intraperitoneum. You mm -hmm. need to enter the retroperitoneum. Then you will keep on complaining that you are in the wrong plane. Yeah. You are not in the wrong plane. You need to enter the retroperitoneum. Simple. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for this class. I think uh, tomorrow we'll discuss about uh, uh, vault dissection or like, you know, closure of the vault. So thank you everyone for sparing your precious time on a weekday, especially at 10 o'clock for the laparoscopy basic classes on DLH. So have a